This is a Big Facts Network exclusive. Another episode yeah. with your homies, the big homies house. We got some homies in the building. Of course, we got Tamira. Yeah, yeah I'm back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all ladies want to introduce yourselves? What's up? It's Project Nay, the capital P. Project oh. Nay. Capital P. Mm-hmm. What's going on? Hi, it's Dream. Dream. Dream yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, this guy right here. Public okay. enemy number one. Wow, why would you say that? <laughs> <laughs> she actually a fan of me, man. She like, she like, she like, she, we cool, we cool. She, I'm she gonna, fans. she gonna play that. She gonna play like she don't like me, but she, we cool. Yeah, I okay. get both sides. Big homie Clay in the building. Yes, what's up, yeah, Big yeah, Clay? Yeah, what's yeah, up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do man, thank y'all for having me. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you're obviously more versed in this than anybody. Else. <laughs> I'm a little invested, okay. Okay. Um. Well, watching I'm off, glad wa- you're watching here. off your your man uh, Netflix account. It's yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, see, how you gotta start? Some, all right. Anyway, <laughs> you can't even share Netflix accounts anymore. But anyway, um, I tried. I yeah. know a lot of people. Me included, um, kind of have like an issue with how things played out. Um, but in talking to you, and you've been very transparent about the whole process and kind of how you ended up where you did. So, one of the things that I think was really interesting that you said is that when you kind of got recruited for the show, you didn't know it was Love is Blind. Mm-hmm. Um, so, can you tell us more about that, or is that more like NDA type stuff? I actually don't know, but I mean, I think. I think a lawyer kind of broke it down, so maybe I could speak on it, but they kind of positioned themselves as a Charlotte single project, so they didn't come out off rip and say, this is Love is Blind. So a lot of people who was getting recruited didn't necessarily know that it was uh, Love is Blind. And then also, too, like some of the paperwork, it would say, like, Charlotte single project, just in case the information would get leaked, so no one would know that this is Love is Blind. You know, that's what happened when I did uh, P-Valley. It wasn't called P Valley when I did P Valley. Oh, wow. Hold on. How be- the I'm fuck crazy. did you end up on P Valley? <laughs> it, it, okay, it was it was <laughs> it, it was. I missed oh, that. I know, right? It's a, a hidden a hidden part of my history, but I don't tell people about it because the episode I was in never came out. It was a pilot. Uh, okay. It was a pilot episode. Oh, okay. So uh, it was like this, but this was like that. It was before I had had a car. So that was like 2017, like when I was filming okay. this shit. Well, see, that's different because you're acting. This is you signing up for something that could potentially change your life. Well, yeah. I mean, well, this is. It's the same thing. A lot of unnamed projects end up being big projects. They're just not called what they end up being known as. This is right. season six of these niggas out here trying to talk to a war. We they know <laughs> they, this ain't no new project. This is a part they knew what they were doing. They, a, the producers knew they didn't yes, know even audition for. But that's why. That's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to get at. I think that they were they approached it that way for a reason Mm -hmm. they definitely had ulterior motives Mm -hmm. and i think that it's important for people to know that you didn't know that the expectation was to get married at the Mm -hmm. end of the six weeks well i knew when we were filming um that 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 was the expectation but when i always talk to the producers they've told me the expectation for you to make the decision at the altar not to just straight up get married it's for you to say is Love is Blind, yes or no? That's the concept of the show. If you watch season one, which you seem like you watch the show, season one, all the contestants went to her. It just started happening recently since season five that mm-hmm. all the contestants don't go to the altar. So mm-hmm. our season was a little bit different where people dropped out, and I don't even think production liked that necessarily. If you look on my Instagram, the CEO came out and defended my action saying, hey, Clay went to the altar to make his decision. I went through the process. I fell in love with AD. I did pretty much everything right it's just that i said no at the end so i'm looked at as a villain but in mm-hmm. terms of what the show concept is i did the whole thing throughout and you had genuine intention when you went in there you said you were looking at it as an unconventional way to find love mm-hmm. do you ladies think love is blind realistically yes uh, i think it can be she look like she, she's struggling with that <laughs> it's a that's a hard question really i think um, it can be i've had i've seen Probably four different shades of love. So, hmm, I mean, I had a, my aunt. She got married in four months. They've been together twenty eight years. Wow. Oh. So it just depends. If it's there, it's there. Yeah. If it's not, it's not. I got asked to marry. I was with him for three years. I said no. Mm. I got as much as I wanted to be married. Green card. Like, no. See. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> oh, <that's crazy. laughs> so wait, you was with this dude for th- you was with this dude for three years. <laughs> yeah, I was. I always wanted to be married, and um, I thought I was gonna be with him. When he asked me, I said no. Mm. It surprised so me. So you too. was wasting there by the time. No, right. I wasn't people wasting time. his time. I feel That's like people's time right there. No, <laughs> it's definitely yeah, wasting people's time. Yeah. If I, Clay I, saying that, no. mine was six weeks. No, listen, no, no. Right. I, 
again? It's just, I feel like a lot of things is happening. I just had a baby and everything, so that kind of played a part in there. Definitely. I mean, I did go through postpartum depression for a little bit over a year, so that played a big part. But now he is married, and I love his wife, so. So he was yeah. ready. He knew what he wanted. He knew what he, he wanted, ready to get and, ma- and maybe I just How old was he? One. he? We're the same age. Why? You said He's, you love his wife? Yes. Like, you she, nice to her, y'all say hi, or you yes. just cool with who he is? <laughs> no, with? that's my girl. <laughs> Yes. Wait, what? This yeah, guy, my Alina's son, his uh, stepmom, like, I would have no problems with him or her. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because you have to. You had the baby with him. Yes. Okay, so I have, oh, I have that, a son with okay. him. So, right. yeah. I was about to say, hold the fuck. Oh, okay. okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Oh, no, no. You got to. Okay, I like that. That's good. That's very mature yeah. for you to be able to be like, you know what? He moved on. He found somebody. I'm happy he found his person. Him. I just wasn't that person for him. Mm. I thought yeah. it was. Until I got asked, I'm like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> is marriage real in today's age? Like, is that what people's goals still are? With mm-hmm. That's my goal, but I feel like everybody just be looking at social media all the time. It's mm-hmm. just like, it's just a play thing for them. Mm-hmm. They'd rather just be out here with a thousand females and males and just acting crazy. I don't know. I don't think in this I'm not like that. marriage is a, like a, a goal or something that people want to reach. I feel like keeping up with the Joneses is what goals are nowadays you know what i mean the, mm-hmm. the nice cars the big houses the body jobs the you know what i mean the teeth the veneers all that those are goals for mm-hmm. people. Social media marriage and buying homes yeah. and stuff like that that's not because marriage is a uh it's a commitment yeah, you know commitment. if you want if you people get your are teeth scared done of commitment yeah nowadays. like damn i don't baby. know i don't know if i'm gonna like you tomorrow having so I don't really nowadays wanna... the grandparents is taking care of them oh, yeah. no. reality. a baby is just a side effect of good sex no mm-hmm. i'm yeah, not that sharing is my baby uh, i only have yeah. one he's six might be seven yeah i got one popping out he's crazy so Next time, I have baby. Zero on zero. Okay. Hey, exactly. Not hey, give DNA. Some, hey, okay, hey. the no no kids are. <laughs> <laughs> Is that. <laughs> So I I I've heard, heard so often people like get offended with people like oh T no kids like why why I don't I don't either <laughs> right that's such a, that's a crazy you. thing to be upset about because yeah, I'm happy I don't about not going having back kids. to the marriage thing like when I date I want to date a man that doesn't have kids and I ask like my mom my aunt a lot of times like is that contradicting. And they say it is, but it's not to me because it I already is. had a kid, but I was in a relationship with his dad for seven years. You know what I mean? So we planned on this kid. We had this kid together and we grew up and grew apart. But I'm, now I'm like, all right, if I get married, I want a whole new man that's already a man, not somebody that I have to build that knows what he wants, that knows what kind of kids he wants and what type of household he wants. You know what I mean? So I feel like it's a... It's a. I uh, get it. Uh, I totally yeah, get it. But I think for me, like I don't have kids, yeah. and I got to a point where I actually want to date people with kids. Like, I want to know what type of father you are. I want to see how you raise exactly. your kids, what yeah. you're still in. Exactly. I want to know what type of parent. Are you going to be patient? Like, and there's mm-hmm. men like that too, though. Yeah, I agree. Most so men more don't. Women with don't no mind. kids mm-hmm. date. Where their other oh, spouse have kids. I, I'm a good stepmother, okay? I be, I, I take the pictures. I will organize the birthday parties. I'll get them dressed. I'll do the shopping. I, I love the. You prefer a woman back. with kids or no kids? I could do, I could do a girl with kids. Oh, okay. uh, How many? Like, yeah, I'll, I'll say one. I say yeah, one. Yeah, I got say, say, say one. Say one is good. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, I, I mess with uh, some women that had like kids that was in their teens. It, it wasn't really much. Oh, a, nah, it wasn't much an issue. <laughs> nah, it wasn't an issue. They was kind of oh. like they was cool. Like you know, they 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 they're independent more so. I think it's the kids. I think it's the Mothers that have like newborn no babies. Yeah. That's like Cause why are you dating again? So yeah, quickly? I, I, I yeah. didn't even have time <laughs> yeah. to be a mom. And, like I always wondered that. Like, mm-hmm. how can you possibly date with kids? Or the, or or the why women that, that will be would be you're pregnant by a nigga. You don't broke up with him. Yeah. But you trying to date while you pregnant. That's insane. Oh, men yeah, that's love crazy. pregnant girls. That's men insane. love pregnant girls. They Ooh. will come up they do. men. They do. It's, it's they horny. Right. It's horny it's men. No, no. They will go up to no, while you're pregnant. Yes, they that will. Is a, that, that is a fetish, daddy. baby girl. Oh, that is, it is a that fetish. Is a fetish. That's weird. Weird. I, but they I don't do. know. That's, that's the same way uh, niggas be going up to big girls. Like, oh, yeah, I can see my yeah. fetish right now. They say it's wetter, though. Big that, that, I just be, I just I be. We all didn't hurt that. We all didn't hurt that. That's all I like. That's the myth. I all I heard was it, it, it ain't was a little deeper. Ah! Why well, are we talking about big girls or pregnant girls now? Girl, <laughs> oh. I thought we said big girl. Oh, well, I skipped this. Big girls got both. Hello. Oh, oh. I, hello, baby. I got time for okay. Pregnant girls, I heard. Yeah, I heard pregnant. That's what yeah. I said. You got that wop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. The hormones sure. is going to go crazy. Yeah. Mm. 
they drink they, they eating all that fruit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Hopefully, yeah. hope, eating hopefully, hopefully eating all that less fruit. Less consequences. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Can't get yeah. pregnant when you're pregnant. Club, you'll be all right. Having a good old time spraying no praying. You sure you don't like praying to girls? <laughs> <laughs> I, ain't never, I ain't never do it, but like now I'm kind of talking to myself like, damn, if I met somebody that was a like, month pregnant, that might be, that might be yeah. fun. Well, you know what's Fine. crazy though? When you I was be... pregnant, I didn't want to have oh, sex. the baby's forehead. Yeah, it depends. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I didn't have no sexual desire when I was Sometimes pregnant. Sometimes you like are completely disgusted by it. Like, get the fuck away from me. Yeah. Uh-huh. You got me out here with yeah, big ass belly. What... Oh, really? That's yeah. interesting. Mm-hmm. I was scared. I thought he was going to hit the baby head. So I was just like. You thought yeah. he was going to impale your baby head? That's fucked up. That's fucked up. No, but it's crazy. Even after I had my son. I Give your baby a birthmark. No, I, 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 I wasn't oh like God. I didn't have no sexual desire either. Even after I had my baby, like I didn't want to have sex. See, I don't. Did be, that I, affect your relationship? I, I think it did. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I, I was ready then. And it's like I do it just because, but it's just like I didn't feel it. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't play the part. It did. It took me a long. But time. But y'all was still together after having a baby. Yeah, yeah for, for a how year. Long? Yeah. Yeah. So. I had an argument about that the other what day. What you had like, an Should about? men be able to, like, if I just gave birth, because the, the guy was saying, like, they're still horny. They still have knees. And he was like, he pretty much was like, so what if you just had a baby? Like, I still need my dick. Please. And I was like, y'all men don't even know what females go right. through to give What's birth. It? And you talk about something, your dick is hard. Fuck you in your dick. <laughs> that's, that's what he wants you to do. What is, what what saying? Saying? Men are, men he wants you to do that. Slaves, Fuck his dick. Men are slaves to lust. If I just gave birth to you, and and I mean not birth to you, birth to your child, and you are watching me go through all the phases of being a newborn mother, why are you bothering me? You should be just as stressed about the baby as me. Why is your penis getting hard right now? How many that belly is gone and that ass is fat. Them titties I'm is sitting you, up. Niggas, it got milk in it. It's all juicy. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, slaves to us. shining. You know what I mean? You at your best when you just had your baby. You the, you the best that you could be, you feel me? You best, shine. Best you ever had. Yeah. Oh, well, speaking <laughs> of kids and parents and all that good stuff, your relationship with your father was um, a big thing that was talked about. Mm. Um, I think that it was really important for people to see that dynamic. I think a lot of things that went on, like watching your mommy, I love your mom, okay? Everybody yeah, says that to you. I know dope. you get that. Um, but... Her, it was like she was like I'm reclaiming my time like we not even gonna do this we we you know what you did I know what you did we went out separate ways um do you really think that because I know a lot of guys who do take their kids with them to cheat because they think that kids aren't mm-hmm. old enough or they're not gonna remember it um they think the kids don't know what's actually going on um what age did you start realizing what was happening I would say probably like 13, 14. Oh, you grown. But I, I, I mean, it's, am I though? Like, I wasn't having sex. So it's like, you know, in terms of what you processing, it's a little different. Like, you know. But you know daddy's cheating on mommy. I know daddy's cheating on mommy, but it's, I also saw other men doing it as well. Like, mm. I want to say like, for I'll, I'll kind of talk about this pretty openly. I don't think, you kind of brought up a point about marriage. Men don't look at marriage the same way women look like look at marriage. Okay. Marriage ain't something that we looking at as like, this is the end all, be all goal. We more so, I think for men, we idolize success and like you know having that power. That's on our goal. That's on our goal. I don't. I don't know too many men that are like man. I my dream is to be married. I, I don't. I don't be hearing that. And no, I see what he's saying yeah. because yeah. we could go our whole life without getting yeah. married, mm-hmm. but could we go our, our whole life without being uh, without with no success, being a broke ass bum ass mm-hmm. nigga? Yep. No, we could not. Yeah. So if we got to pick. We gonna chase. This now getting married happy and on the, along the way, cool. But I associate uh, most successful men with having a wife though, because I think it keeps you focused. If you're out here dating and and doing all these other things, you can't pour a hundred percent into your business because you're you're searching for something else, you're searching for love and not success. So and I think that that doesn't get highlighted. Though. I do agree with you that that is just a that's a good point. But in terms of what we see, I don't. I don't look up to good guys like that. I, don't, I look up to people who's out here going to get it. That's what's put into the forum. And even if you look at publications, having marriage, especially black people, that's not something that, that's not an agenda that's trying to get pushed. It actually wants separation. So in terms of what we well, see. Well, you said we want separation? Not us. But oh. I think media oh. and yeah. stuff like that, if you kind of get my, my drift, I don't think the black household being together is something that, and it's, it's an agenda for yeah. For you know what the world wants, you know, especially black households. That's why Tyreek killed Ghost in Power. 
Who? Can show us. Tyreek. <laughs> Kill Ghost and Power. Because oh. oh. family dynamics are not strong black fathers being a good mm. role model isn't the cool thing to do. So why not have them beef? And mm. now he killed his father. Like, yeah. it's just mm-hmm. not cool. I get yeah. what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Like, that's not the story that the media wants to portray. Um, but it was still a conversation that was so necessary mm-hmm. and so good. And I think it was healing for a lot of people that watched I it. Agree. I know you get a lot of feedback on that. Yeah. Um, what do you think? What do you want people's biggest takeaway to be from your experience on Love is Blind? I mean, I'm a regular guy. I tried out an experiment. You know, did I do it the way that people probably wanted me to do it? No. But in terms of what you read, in terms of the guideline and what the show is, I did exactly that. I just made a decision at the end. I think a lot of the negativity is the fact that I was one of two couples to actually go to the altar and there's five other couples so for me making that decision all the magnitude of that decision was really on me mm-hmm. so like when people call me a villain i'll be like what did i really do to be a villain mm-hmm. who did i disrespect who did i spit on who did i who did i all i did was make a decision say i'm not ready for marriage and to be for that to be looked at as a villain i think that's more telling to society than to me honestly mm-hmm. what does you that know? say about society I just feel like they they frugal like in terms of like in terms of decisions being that need to be made. People need to actually hear things. I think it's a very microwavable society. So like people will see clips, and they'll see a black woman getting hurt and they'll be like, Oh, I don't like this guy. But like yeah. you don't mm-hmm. get to see the context of like why someone make a decision. Right. Why would you want to be married to somebody who's not hundred percent with you? Like yeah. we gotta stop trying to just do stuff to, to check stuff off the checkboard mm-hmm. and we actually got to be more so like hey is this something that if we're going to have a, a fruitful relationships because divorce breaks up households and we're not trying to be you know in that type of situation you know so you said if she wasn't for you 100 percent, if it wasn't like 100 percent, yes it was a no like so if it's a 90 percent, yes it's a no i think if it was 90 percent, you know so that was the biggest thing that was like when i was having my conversations i was like damn me and ad relationship is actually good so i could see myself marrying her that's probably my biggest issue is the fact that the relationship was going well i didn't want to end it mm. so i probably should have this is where i'm gonna take ownership i probably should have just like looked back and like man clay you really not ready for marriage mm. i should have had those tough conversations with me but we were having a good time like we were enjoying each other mm. we actually had a conversation that we were going to end it uh we did, and I feel as though AD wanted to go to the altar as well, mm-hmm. where I expressed, hey, I want to go to therapy with you so okay. we could go about this the correct way. Right. She wanted to go to the altar, and I decided to go to the altar as well. So, you know, that stuff doesn't get talked about. You know, a lot of stuff that, a lot of stuff wasn't seen, and I understand why people have a negative, you know, conversation with me, but I don't think people who ever had a conversation with me one-on-one that actually talked to me without the cameras being there, having the same feelings mm-hmm. after they have that conversation with me because there was a lot of stuff that wasn't shown you know yeah, no, mm-hmm. i agree i think like like you said previous seasons you had to go to the altar to make that decision y'all season only two of y'all made it the other person said yes so you of course look like the bad guy of the season and they always need somebody to be that person it should have been that white guy that was which one? Oh, jimmy <laughs> or or the one that jeremy was like the whole america's gonna be clapping for me oh right that's now. matt that's matt like, yeah, yeah, yeah. um but speaking of that Colorism became a big conversation that people mm. were saying in the comments. Ooh, yeah. um, you're a dark skinned man yourself. I would like to believe you consider yourself like brown or yeah. something. I'm dark skinned. Um, okay, we about yeah. the same complexion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. so when when you see, I'm pretty sure you saw the comments, when you seen people saying, oh, he just wasn't attracted to AD because she was dark skinned, what do That's you respond insane. to those type of things? <laughs> I, I kind of want to ask those people where where did you get that from? Right, you know. Like, you, and then yeah. I think it's funny too, right? They're like, Clay looks like he dates white women and, and light skinned women, but then it's like y'all not mad at AD for literally being on scenes with white men flirting, <laughs> but nobody mad at that. The, the, it's always different. It's always I different. About it's that. always yeah, different. Yeah, you feel yeah, you like, 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 look, look at all more. like look at all the like the celebrity couples. Like it's if a black dude get with a white woman, oh he a sellout. Da, da, da. Yep. Yeah. But when Eve get with oh please, and we know we seen it with Serena Williams. Eve was. Serena Williams get with no. her dude. Oh, these are goals. Meet these Negroes. Why. There's a reason why. <laughs> what Will- is the reason why? Serena, I'm about to tell you. Serena Williams and Eve didn't say, I'm with a white man because black men don't. They didn't throw black men under the bus in order to justify them being with white women. Black men I mean, aren't like, doing that either. Yes, they are. No, they're not. They no, they're not. Say, oh, who? who? Which one? Black women don't know It'd how to talk to It'd be a toxic podcast. Saying yeah, like that. Y'all, like, it y'all ain't fresh and I, I can agree with that. Uh, more men I hear have, they throw women underneath the bus. Black who? Who are these black niggas? Men. Black men. Real, you uh, don't but, know but you look, but you look at the percentage. You know, black men are yeah. mostly marrying black women, I do right? Know that. I yeah. know that. I read like, like, I know 
on that's why I said. Life. That's why I said the media. That's yeah. why I said the media. That's an agenda. Black mm-hmm. men are marrying black women. Black men date black women. Mm-hmm. Like I think that's something that is. That's a that's the biggest lie that mm-hmm. black men ain't dating black women. Who who we dating? Like it ain't it ain't that much percentage of black men dating white girls. That's like media. That's athletes. That's a okay. small percentage of real people in this real world dating. You know the other race. So yeah. So that's why when you go outside and touch grass, yeah, you'll see that. <laughs> why? Why is fuck me? What I do? <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm just saying, I agree with what he said. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I will always ask, like, where are you getting that from? Because I've always dated all complexions of black women. Like I've dated many dark skinned women. I've dated many brown skinned, light skinned. I don't even. I'm not even the type of guy to be like brown skin. I'm like dark skinned, light skinned, whatever. But I think that colorist conversation, it, it to me, it was a little wild. And I think it's just people trying to figure out why I said no to AD. My answer wasn't good enough. It was like, nah, it's something else. Yeah. And that's the thing that's yeah. interesting when I'm watching. I'm like, I'm going to do, I don't be lying. I'll be mm. super transparent. But y'all got to find a reason. And it's like. To make you the villain. To make me the villain. Yeah. Mm. You know? It was a good answer. I was there with you. But it was the, oh, because of finances. And I'm like, bro, what was y'all talking about the whole time? That it wasn't because was of finances. That was a cut edit scene. Yeah, so they, they're the producers asked, will do that. Yeah. Edit it like that. Because they're trying to, at that, that, that scene that you're talking about, they're trying to figure out why I said no. So I'm telling them, hey, it's not enough time. They're like. F that, Clay. Nah, what, what's the reason why you said no? So they're going over, you, were you attracted to her? They're going down the list mm. of like, and I'm like, nah, Trying nah, nah. So then when they said that when this finance thing came, that's something I did talk about. Like if you actually, if you remember on, when my mom came, mm-hmm. my sister asked her a question about like, what do you do for work? Mm-hmm. That whole kind of conversation, it was a lot about, well, what do you actually do to make some money? Because Clay is having some issues with you just laying around the house and we supposed to get married and you told me you was doing all this and then we come into the, the real world and you ain't doing all that, that could be an issue. Now, I'm going to say this for AD. AD had money saved up so I don't want to make it seem like she wasn't doing her yeah, thing. Yeah, she had red bottoms and all my big YSL bag. I was to okay? <laughs> I, I, I pay attention. Don't start that. Donations. <laughs> Not donations. Donations. <laughs> <laughs> she, had, she, had, she had money Why? saved up, you know. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? Donations. But, I mean, I mean, just on top of that though, so do you feel like it's wrong for a guy to expect a woman to meet him where he's at financially? Because a lot of times it's mm. like, oh, women don't have to bring nothing. You know, like I do nothing. I don't know. Kind of, kind of do. Like, I don't want to yeah. be with a liability because yeah. that's what it is at that point. If you're, if you're the cause for things going out but not helping things go in, yeah. it's like, okay, so what else do you do outside mm-hmm. of being a wife? Because a lot of people, women, don't know how to do nothing. Okay, I didn't want to say it. I'm glad you said it. I'm glad you said it. That's why I was kind of slow. I'm glad you said it. I didn't want to say it. You said it, not me. Um, Oh, no. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Well, me, I'm going to work. I don't know about nobody else. Um, I feel like it is a partnership whenever you get married. So if he is lacking somewhere, he going to get hurt or something and cannot work to pay the bills, you should be able to help to pick up the slack. But it's like, I'm not saying, oh, got to pay all the bills or pay half and half. I'm not saying all that, but it's like, don't compensate with nothing mm-hmm. at all. So do you, do you need a woman to meet you where you at? I think for dudes, I'm, for me, like I, I, I'm an aggressive spender in terms uh-huh. of like my assets and stuff like that, you know? So I'm spending, I'm, I, I'm one bad deal away where I could be check to check, you know what uh-huh. I'm saying? So, you know, for me, I'm not in a position right now where I could say confidently I could just take care of somebody. That's now, transparent. No, yeah. and, and, and that's what it is. Now, I'm making money. I'm making over six figures, but I'm still, I still understand that I'm one bad deal away from, you know, now I'm living back to how I was before I got my job. Yeah. So me, I'm not looking for women I got to take care of. Now, if that's who you are, Yo, there's dudes out here playing that game, and I'm not playing that, and yeah. I and I put my hands up and say that's not the game I'm playing. Uh-huh. So if that's the game you're playing, and like that's what I said, you know, even with AD, we had our conversations. Like I've always been transparent that I'm not that guy. Now, will I take care of you? Will you have to pay the mortgage? No, nah, because I already got my crib. Right. Will you have to pay Facts. for some of your car notes? No, but I there's say gonna, this all the time. But there's yeah. some stuff that I might need your assistance with. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Like I'm not trying to. And then also too, like you need to help me out. If, if, if you're not helping out financially, organization, like yeah. sir, you gotta we gotta mm-hmm. have something where we. Build Building some type of dynamic, and if it's just like you got my back, <laughs> moral support. <laughs> I got, I got you, baby. It Bitch, get your hand off me. Though. Like the yeah. one time I didn't work and I let somebody kind of be financially mm-hmm. responsible for me, I was damn near his personal assistant. Like mm-hmm. I said, yeah. I, was, I took care of kids. That was your job. That was that was job. I think that's that's Clearly, a big that problem job. With that. Like he didn't have to worry about nothing but work. Nothing. He came yeah. home, dry cleaners, as he should, clothes, yep. everything. Like so, that's why I'm saying like. 
there had you once again it you have to, to know the person sense, you're sitting across sure. from mm-hmm. if that's the plan that works for y'all and he like he wanted me more at home because he don't want me answering to another man he don't want another yeah. man telling me when to come to work or you can't do this because you got to be here yeah. so he was like no you, you could stay home i'll give you whatever you was making just take care of this mm-hmm. when i tell you go pick up the kids or go do this go go how, did, how did you fuck that up <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> he cheated on me, of course. Um, I but I, cheating wasn't really the issue for me. Um, cheating is never the issue. It's more about how you cheat. So I just felt like so you so so cheat, you're not cheating ain't the issue. Shit. So so, so I, I know what they were doing. I was, doing like I was laying down with. Yeah. So 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 you so, like, so you give it a nigga. No, he no he he on bullshit. It depends on what I'm dealing with. It really depends on what you're dealing with. It, like if you're gonna be dating what a bad person, it, dep- it, 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 it depends how bad you like the guy. That's I what it means. It, it depends on, on depend on how good he provides. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 You have to know realistically. <laughs> <laughs> if you're dating a basketball player, you think he's going the season, going to every state, seeing all these bitches doing. All, excuse my language. I gotta stop playing girls. <laughs> seeing all these females doing all this stuff, and they just waiting to come home. Unless he got it out of his system already, no, they're gonna do that. You have. So to you be think all men cheat? <laughs> all successful men cheat. With I, a lot of money. No, I don't think all men cheat. I think something at some point, I think all men have cheated or do some type of cheating, and then they learn from either they learn from it, and they be like, oh hell no, I'm not willing to lose this. My relationship. Or, they, this or they slick else. and they know they can get away with it. And men will only treat you. How or they there's you women that them. accept it, mm-hmm. yeah. so they know that they could go home, but they got to take the jaws they just was outside in mm-hmm. off before they get in that bed. For sure. That was very oh, specific. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. It was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> no, before you come in, hold up. Now. <laughs> um, but I, I just think it's about being realistic. Like, if you work at the motherfucking post office and you're my boyfriend, I do not expect you to be cheating on me. Mm. If you are a rapper and you have all this stuff, that's a little different. You have a little bit more temptation. That's mm. all I'm saying. So regular niggas get less leash. Yeah. You can be a regular <laughs> no, nine to five, but so. you're the CEO so. of your company, mm-hmm. and I know your secretary probably under your desk sucking your dick. Second, so, like, exactly, yeah. come on, be realistic 100%. about the person you're dealing with. That's all I'm saying. Like, it's I don't accept cheating. I don't think it's okay. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But once again, it's about how you do it. I have a rule. I shouldn't find out about it and keep that shit in other states. If you, whatever you're doing over there, and, and I'm Yo, I have and a I don't friend. Know, so, I'm on good. this topic, I have a friend that. That just told me yesterday. A friend or a little friend? No, not a little friend. Okay. A friend. That I'm glad we all know what that means. <laughs> that just got out of jail. Not a little, yeah, yeah. That just got out of jail mm-hmm. from doing uh, 12 years. And he has a girl that held him down the whole time. And he's out, but she goes to work all day. And he he gets, he gets makes his money, of course, too. But he's in a position where he has to be at home, like health-wise uh-huh. or whatever. Um. So, But she told him, like, whatever you do while I'm not home, just make sure when I get back home, I can't tell. That's a little crazy. Now I'm about to say, yo, damn, wait, you got all them spirits and all. You feel whole thing. She waited twelve years for that. God damn, you wait. This nigga was in jail for twelve years. Take out just like at the home, but she's saying like while I'm not around, you do what you need to do. So hell of a deal. You can't you can't backtrack on that. Now you said it's at the house. But like you said, levels of love too. Like if you really really love a nigga, that's why we broke up. Because at first I was like, okay, I know what dog I'm dealing with. I can deal with it. I can deal with it. And then I, when you really start loving somebody. I'm like, all right, you want to make me stab you. So yeah. now I don't want to get to that point. Yeah, right? that's what why I just, I walked away. Like, I just, I, that's, I, that's the most financially stable I've ever been in my life. But I mm-hmm. still was like, I, I'm not willing to trade Take one for the other. Comes mm-hmm. with it. But it took some work. You was about to sit through that shit. I, yeah. I was, yeah. I was, we was engaged. I was going to go through with it. Like, uh, even to this day, he's still, like, he's locked up again right now. But he was like. Oh, yeah. You got a tight, huh? He's oh, in the first time. Y- y'all Atlanta girl? Like, this, y'all Atlanta? She, she from New York. No, yeah, no she okay, from New York. Okay, okay. I'm like, that's, you, you couldn't wait to do that. Greenville, South Carolina? No, I'm from Denver. Oh, Denver, Denver. Mm-hmm. Okay, smooth, smooth. Where are you from? Charlotte. Charlotte. Charlotte? Yeah. yeah. See, don't be doing that New York girls. Where are you from, Kodak? I'm from Atlanta. Born and raised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta Brady take baby. out a tease. I'm from Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brady, baby. Not Atlanta. Not Atlanta. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> not Atlanta. Not but where you from? <laughs> where you from affects how you date too. I think what that, you that, that mean? has to be there. Oh, I God. think so, 100. percent Because me coming from the south, I mean, me coming to the south from the west coast, I'd be like, yo, y'all. Denver. Wait, what's the difference? Watch what I say. Country is hell. Denver, Colorado's not country. No, Denver, Colorado is not country at all. What is it? 
Ye- Hippie. It's some, it's some no yeehaw idea. shit going on in Denver. <laughs> no, it's not country at all. Country Denver is a city. That's the city. That's I know, like, yeah, Denver. Yeah, we ain't got no yeah, Denver, like, Denver, Denver, Denver and Broncos. And stuff. Oh, y'all got farms in Colorado. But in like on in Greeley, like hours away from the city, them, not them in them type of farms. No. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. They got those. Yeah, they got we those got, right. got sticky, those too. The sticky stems. <laughs> yeah. Hello. But I do think that where you where you're raised is it it plays a big part too. Mm-hmm. Because me coming from the West Coast, a lot of girls that I grew up with, they like their their goals, okay, going back to who they want to date, their goals in relationships is finding a lot of pimps or men that can provide for them. Right. And that's just a West Coast thing. I'm, it just is what it is. Jesus. A lot of women grow up, go to strip clubs, and it, and if y'all don't know, I'm telling that. y'all just what it is, 100%. Mm-hmm. A lot of girls from Cali, they go looking for providers and protectors, and those girls are usually girls that come from the strip clubs or come from the streets or come from foster homes. So they're looking for a male that can be there and whatever he has that comes with them, they're willing to accept. So if you gotta go make some money, however you supposed to go make that money, then you're gonna go make it, but you're not coming home with no money. Oh my period. God. Mm. Yeah. Damn, that's wow. real. That's survival. And, but coming from the no south way, and having that mentality pockets. that y'all Atlanta country boys, when when I say country, it's like y'all niggas have on Tim's mowing the lawn with freaking little Daisy Duke shorts on. That's the country that I feel when I see Texas. Georgia. What's that? Like, I'm not proud of you. Oh, I got some pictures. I didn't see but, uh, that shit, but I ain't see that shit. These are, these are some specific community that that are, These are, these are, these are men that are raised in that. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Of, like of Tim's and Daisy. Like, what? Yes. That's, that's, a, a, that's a disgusting You're down problem. in Macon. Texas and <laughs> Houston. Is, in Houston and Dallas and stuff. They ain't outside more and oh, with them Texas jean wild. shorts on and Tim's. Mm, oh, jean shorts. Okay. Guess what? This ain't Texas. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I love y'all doing the same thing. Uh, no, you're not allowed to wear jean shorts. I think y'all might be worse. Y'all wear capris. Relax. They be wearing them tight and mirror jeans. Yeah. Big ass Balenciagas. Clay, so your business that you have have. Yeah. <laughs> what? So what's the uh like what is what is it about? Is it a tech company or like what's the, what's the basis of it? So my nine to five is a tech company. Mm-hmm. So you know I just sell like AI solutions. But uh, oh. my business is uh, I rent out jet skis and boats. Oh. So I got like two boats. I got uh so I got a jet car. I got four jet skis. So we rented out in the Charlotte area. Try to bring some diversity to the lake. So it's been a fun business to be. Yeah, in. you can't bring a diversity to Atlanta lakes. <laughs> yeah, what's good with that lake? Lake Lanier Lake, right? Yeah. Don't you, yeah. you want to lose? Some, you want to lose some shit down there? Uh, you will not get that. Jet ski back. Oh, I Never. bet. I it'll, bet. It'll, it'll belong to the sea. When you were going to check on your rental properties mm-hmm. and not going back home at night, mm-hmm. were you really going to check on the rental properties? Yeah, so uh, where we filmed that, it's, it's a place called Pineville. I'm sure you're familiar mm-hmm. with it. So I live in I live in a city. So the city from Pineville with traffic, I'll say it's about 40, 40 minutes. Mm-hmm. We used to have to film at like 6 p.m. Mm-hmm. But that particular time, that I was, uh, and there's no excuses. I should have came home. But I honestly... It was a lot. I came from Pineville. I drove to my crib. I worked at the lake all day from, I'll say from 10 to like 6 p.m., 7 p.m. After that, I had to go put the boats back from Lake Norman, which is a 45-minute commute to Lake Wiley. Also, you at the lake getting beat up by the sun. Honestly, just truthfully, I just crashed. I got to my crib because I had to put my jet skis to my garage as well because I got multiple places where I store them. Uh, When I got to the house, I did three already, uh, you know, commutes that was 45 minutes plus. I just fell asleep it wasn't nothing intentional it just i got tired and i should have came home but that drive to pineville was gonna be another 30 minutes and i just did like probably driving while i was commuting like three hours you know so it was just i was just exhausted yeah what's the biggest impact the show has had on your life Uh, i think it definitely got me i think trying to date healthier and like you know not Mm -hmm. be uh you know i would say some of the ways that might have been toxic with me i would say you know i kind of dated from a pleasurable perspective i was always looking at the physical so now i'm able to like all right be a little more transparent i'm going to therapy understanding my emotions being able to talk it out and also realizing that i'm not made for everybody i'm not meant for everybody and you know i'm good with moving on i'm good with you know, with people, how they perceive me, it is what it is. Like, I'm not about to be trying to change everybody's perception. So I think for me, it's more so about our identifying who really, you know, rocks for me. And if it, if it's something strong, then that's what I'm going to pursue, you know? Yeah, I think you were really self-aware. I think that that's something that kind of showed throughout the show. Like, you you could see you reflecting and you, you going through it. You wanting to love. You trying to figure out how to get there, how to trust, how to... So I think, like I said, overall, it was a great journey to be on with you guys. I loved watching it. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I do think, like you said, like the future of Love is Blind. Mm-hmm. I know that they're bringing back some of their old cast members and having them be like producers and like yeah. different type of roles. Do you think that you'll end up in a situation like that? I don't even see how that I could. You're you done know, with like, it. I, 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 like, you know, what are they going to do? Like, Clay, we want you to get the new batch. I mean, yeah. I probably could get Love is Blind lit. Yeah, that's you know what I'm saying. Hey, you yeah. might go in there and do some recruiting. Clay, Clay do the producing. He picking the girl. Yeah, I'll pick, pick the girl. Yeah, yes. we'll get, we'll get it. Yes. We'll, then we might have. You might have some. We might, we might have a show. Yeah. You know? Would you guys go on a show for love, like a reality show? I would. Um, I, I think I would. Mm. I would be open so to see, it. It would be yeah. an experience, mm-hmm. Most as he said for sure. So if I had the opportunity, I would take it. I always thought about it because I feel like if it did, maybe like the stars really might align for mm-hmm. some yeah. shit. Yeah, like, you got the personality. That'd be dope though. Yeah, yeah that'd be dope. Sure. Oh, I'm not going on it. I could see me now doing my confessions right now. I'm from Harlem and I don't want to leave me on that show. So this, you know, break from from Clay and Love Is Sorry. Blind type shit. Yeah. But I do. I saw this online and I gotta ask everybody to hear this. So K Michelle came out and said that she feels uncomfortable when her nigga cry around her. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Well, oh, I, I seen saw that. So, on it. so, what do you? Uh, why are you looking like that? Because that's a hard topic. Mm-hmm. Why is it a hard topic? Because we've been having these conversations within the community about providing safe spaces for Black men and yeah, making sure they feel heard and making sure they're okay with their emotions. Uh-huh. And I get her. So that's why it's hard for me because seeing a man cry, like I remember the first time I seen a boy cry, and I was like, "What the fuck? I'm supposed to do with this?" <laughs> like I didn't know what to do. Like. <laughs> I remember. You I made him cry. No, I didn't. Something happened. I was like, I was a freshman in high school, and either he got jumped, something was happening in the hood, and he was like, oh, well, he was, I'm tired of this shit, and starts crying. I'm like, That's do I patch your back? Though. Like, I, I don't, I didn't know what to do. It I never seen a man situation. cry, mm-hmm. so I didn't know how to deal with it. But, see, it depends on why you seeing your man cry, right. too. Mm-hmm. Like, if it's like you're crying to fight for this relationship, and you be showing emotion, yeah. and, and you're there with me, um... But, like, if you're crying because your feelings are hurt for some reason and you just can't really wrap your head around how to verbalize that and deal with that, that's a flag for me because... You're, you're not a convict. You're, 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 you're yeah. got to kind of mm-hmm. control that, like, yeah. figure out how to verbalize it. So, like, because that's what I cry because I get mad and I want to fight for you, right? <laughs> usually if I'm crying, it's because I can't do what I really want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 100%. That's, that's usually... And people be thinking I'm sensitive, but I really just be saying, like... Yeah. Right uh, now. Trust so, me, I know God, that. But... <laughs> So, on the opposite end, what would make a man cry, right? So, is it because you can't control your emotions enough and you're trying to figure out why you're so frustrated and you can't do what you want to do? So, that's why, like, I I get it what depends saying, on what the crime should, is. You, it can y'all on. answer that and question? You because as a woman, we can't answer you that said, so question. So, what's the question? The, why we cry? Yeah. What would what would make y'all individually cry at, or get y'all to that point? Um, the last time I cried, it was just because it was a simply solvable situation, but it was kind of like this person was, this is what they wanted to do. And I'm like, just don't do that, and everything is going to be okay. Whatever you, like, this shit is small. You Let this shit go. girlfriend, Kodak? Relax. Oh, <laughs> not too much, not too much. Relax. But I was like, just don't. Do this shit that you're so dead set on doing, and yeah. we're gonna be okay. Yeah, <laughs> so cute. You was um, getting frustrated. And I, yeah, outside of that, did it'd you be like, like cry or, or I, I, I cry? I, I'm, a, I'm like a passionate crier, like because I, no, I cry. It's not? No, hell no. Not, I'm not saying I'm like the. Re- I'm saying <laughs> I'm saying the reason I cry. Like, oh, yeah. I'm thinking I, like you was a passionate <laughs> boo who cried. Like I'm nah, like, I can see some tears like the last time I cried was probably because I did an interview um about two weeks ago, um and it was just talking about the shit that I had to do. So it was like a, a life type thing. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, so I had doing all this shit in my life, had to overcome all this shit, and I was like, damn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 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 But it was yeah. one of, it was one of those, but like, mm-hmm. I'm about to, I, because I'm really good at controlling my emotions. Like, mm-hmm. you know how niggas that play video games be throwing they yeah. control. Oh, my yeah. friend just broke his TV. I've <laughs> never done that. <laughs> and I've had awful games of Madden. Mm-hmm. And I just power off. Yeah. I'm going to bed. <laughs> I'm going to go to bed. I'm really good at controlling my emotions. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to cry over things that are that are irrelevant. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it shit doesn't matter. This shit is fickle. Like, yeah. okay, it's game cheat. Fuck it. I'm, I'll am i be fine. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. Um, I just feel like this. Like, my son, he's six. So since he was able to talk, I always taught him how to express his feelings. Because he used to throw stuff around, get all, like acting up and stuff I'm like no we're gonna talk about this i don't feel you know what I'm saying? i feel like it starts in the home so when they get older they won't be having to 
cry and be all acting like that because I, I get like that sometimes like even as an adult when I get upset to the point I gotta cry it's because I can't do what I want to do like you said so, so I try to instill it into my child to you know express your feelings talk about how you what's going on here so you won't have to be crying and doing all that you know learn how to control your emotions mm-hmm. more but well, just talk about it I, I, I love to talk to my child yeah. you know what makes you well, cry uh, I'll say for me, what makes me cry is like when things get overwhelmed. Cause usually I'm kind of I'm like you, Kodak. Like I'm pretty good at like handling my emotions, but like when I cry, that means that it just overflows. So I, like you know, yes, yes bro, that <laughs> make that <laughs> make yes, bro. Cause yeah. there's certain times where like as men, we just got to be like just take shit, you just yeah. take, mm-hmm. shit take shit, yeah. take shit, take shit, take yeah. shit, and it may be a day, maybe a week, it may be a, a couple months, mm-hmm. maybe a couple years, but yeah. eventually, like I remember the last time some shit like I don't think I cried, but I just literally deleted all my social media uh-huh. and was sitting in the house for like 24 hours mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it was like i am having i don't know if it was anxiety attack i don't know if it was a mental breakdown but i deleted instagram oh, twitter yep. go. everything yeah. and yeah. i put my phone in, in my drawer and i just it happened halloween night last year mm-hmm. it happened halloween night and i was having a great day i don't know mm-hmm. what happened but everything just comes out and i mm-hmm. feel like it comes out different ways for different men. Mm-hmm. Like with me, it's just like it'll come out in tears, it'll come out in solitude. Mm-hmm. But for other niggas, it comes out in violence. Mm-hmm. 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 The yeah. niggas, that's where you have the situation where uh, a, a woman gets beat up mm-hmm. or uh, a, a mm-hmm. spots get shot up. Yeah. And these mm-hmm. comes from niggas not being able to control their emotions. Because mm-hmm. 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 uh, uh, a woman that loses track of her feelings she's just be mad moody da, 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 da. niggas when they lose track of their emotions yeah. shit gets deadly yeah. 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 Uh-huh. that's why I feel like black men we, we we do need to you know go to therapy and have that outlet because like even mm-hmm. like what K. Michelle said I think that's a sentiment with a lot of women I don't really feel like it's accepted for black men to cry because you know we're looked at as leaders of the household mm-hmm. so like when women see that they look at us as weak but also too like it's you no one can just hold in all those emotions and yes, not let it bro. out mm-hmm. it's not realistic yeah, you know what i'm saying we're humans human. <laughs> so i say like for you know especially with black men like we should probably have a, a therapist so we mm-hmm. could have those conversations yeah. and kind of have that outlet that way when we look at our women we're not really having that side but i do believe black women should be a little more comfortable with men yeah, showing their emotions because you know we we carry in a lot and like you know me, me and Cody said like a lot of times it overflows now if a dude if a nigga just out here Beating shit up, crashing out. Mm. He he need, he definitely need therapy. You know yeah. he definitely need jail. Need Fuck that. Yeah, yeah, Straight yeah. jail. <laughs> 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 yeah, but yeah, like, like it's though. it's kind of like, expecting up. men not to have their emotions. It's kind of like having like look it, looking at this water bottle mm-hmm. and you filling up this water bottle all the way to the top and expecting it never to mm-hmm. overflow. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's overflowing. Weak ass water bottle. That's it's supposed right. to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It needs an outlet. Yeah, right. yeah. It needs and it's the same way with it's men. So. Its limits for sure. That's a really good analogy. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think a lot of it goes it to mm-hmm. upbringing and what's taught in the black community. Mm-hmm. So you know, we're always told the boys like, "Stop crying like a little girl." Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why are you acting? Why are you acting like a girl? You hit like a girl. Mm-hmm. All those connotations say like being weak equals to being a girl. Mm-hmm. Showing emotion means you're being girly. So I think that we need to change. How, how start we from the bottom. Them. Stop calling niggas sassy too. Yeah. yeah. I refuse. <laughs> I, I refuse. <laughs> if you're acting sassy, I'm calling you. That's it. Exhibit A. I will be hey, that's, you know, that's, no that's, that's their first thing. They'll call you gay, I think sassy, crazy. Should, yes. Should, like, uplift. No, they, we should uplift our sons 100%, but we should watch the way we teach <laughs> our men to control their emotions. When you say, don't. Tell them, oh, crying is for girls. Technically, you're not supposed to cry in front of a girl. That's not a manly thing to do, is what I would say to my son. If you want to cry, you pick your day to cry out of those seven days out that week, and you cry that day. But that next day, you get back on your But shit. how you control your emotions you like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. That's like, that's like, like, yes, you can. Let's say Beyonce. Like that. Beyonce is the one that I'm said that that, that I'll never forget. She said she's a successful black woman that deals with her household, her career, and I forgot the other things that she had. I mentioned but she said out of my seven days of 
working every day from nonstop. I take one day and I let everything out. I might I might be happy that day. I might be sad that day. But that's the day that I focus Listen, on my Listen, Beyonce can stop working for 10 years yeah. and be straight. Mm -hmm. she Everybody ain't Beyonce. But she's a hard so, worker. You so, didn't, you, but but, but, every, but Beyonce is literally so Beyonce. 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 That's Beyonce. Beyonce. I think, so but as that's men, still so, a human being. So no, no, no. Her voice and what her opinion is. But this is how it's different. Beyonce, like I said, she could chill for 10 years and be straight. Be okay. As the average man, the average black man, niggas <laughs> don't got money like that. First of all, so they have to work. They have to work yeah, through. Yeah, you gotta be working. They gotta work through their emotions. Eyes open, eyes bad closed. days, sad days, emotional days, death, mental health issues, all that. We you cannot. We don't. We Sunday. don't. We don't yeah. have the yeah. luxury. We don't have the luxury of having a bad day. Most black men don't have that. That's so so if you're trying to lead a household, and it's it's really seven. It's a seven day job. So what day do we have to set aside? Like, okay, kids, can't leave. Y'all got that. time to set you aside to, to, go to go to the bar. Go set some time aside to go shoot We don't. Or I don't. I, I don't. I don't have time. I don't have time. You got time to play games. You got time. I, you know. You know what time? I, you, 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 time. you know what time? But listen, this is what I was saying when you said um, a therapist. Therapy could be. I've been trying to get. I've been trying to get into therapy game. since the it end of last year. Therapy could be a chest game. Now. It could be you talking go to somebody. Nah, no, you got to talk to that person. You, yeah, it, yeah. You can't. It's therapy not just in, solitude. In because ways. if I get in my feelings, if I just sit and tell, because how my personality is set up, how my personality is set up. But that's what I'm saying. I need to talk to somebody because I'm gonna in my head. I'm saying that bitch tripping. You right? Just anger though that you need therapy for. You feel me? Is what it's, I'm it's, saying. It's, it's not just anger. It's a bunch yeah, of things. You can't just be angry. Like when you say emotional, you can't just think, oh, you're being emotional. You're either sad or mad. No, there's a thousand different emotions. You know yeah, it's, I mean? it's jealousy, it's, envy, it's, it's, it's distrust, it's, it's, it's a bunch of things. So you got to so find need, what you need to target and, and then you find that that you cult know, to it. Therapy. But that's why I can't just sit in the house. Therapy. You got to go to therapy to find out what's the that problem, would be the like, work for me, and I think that that's what people have to be yeah. realistic Who is your about therapist? where they are. I'm gonna say why. I don't listen. You have to be realistic about where you are. Don't go to see the lady just to see the lady so you could fake get your girlfriend back. Like really be fully into it, right? So I was on a therapy and I was lying to my therapist because <laughs> <Like, laughs> I just I was scared of judging and I wanted her to view me a certain way. And even with that, like that's not what you're there for. So you have mm -hmm. to be realistic. I about usually go where to the doctor are. like that and I try to slow my <laughs> when I had high blood pressure. I'll be trying to. That is crazy. That's crazy. You know, you about to see, you about to see, I don't lie to that, that doctor. That doctor Hell needs to no. know what the fuck is going on. The therapist the same way. I feel like with the therapy though, you gotta kind of find out what is your style. Like after the show, I did mm -hmm. three different therapists. Like if it don't work, you don't, why am I wasting my time? You spending exactly. thirty minutes to an hour exactly. with somebody, and you don't even want to have that conversation. My therapist now, like she literally asks me questions where I have to think That's and the like, have, yeah, you gotta find yeah. your right mix. Like you can't just be like, all right. Damn, I did therapy once. It ain't mm -hmm. work for me. Yeah. Shoot, I went with the dude. He gave me Bible verses the whole time. I thought That's I need to go with a black male. Oh, yeah. 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 If it was a male oh, I don't or a like female, too. Yeah. I, did, I, I tried three different types of therapy. Yeah. One I had to go to because school and they put me in anger management. That's the only one I actually <laughs> learned something from because it taught me the different type of angers mm -hmm. and kind of when you could see where it's coming from. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, this is displaced anger and you could kind of understand it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. But when I got older and I tried to do therapy for, and usually I would only go after very traumatic experience and I think that That's affected my um, therapy journey too so everybody mm -hmm. has different type yeah. of therapy journeys yours isn't gonna look like mine yeah. you might have found your therapist on the first time it may take me five or six different therapists but i think that's important i think Find recommendations right. recommendations help too like mm -hmm. if you got a, somebody that's similar to you and they actually doing it and they could recommend mm -hmm. that therapist that's like a good mm -hmm. my yeah. sister lives in a household with me she, I'm, I'm, I'm going to my, my sister's therapist because mm -hmm. she knows my personality mm -hmm. and she said mm -hmm. i think this is so recommendations definitely help out um, but like I said, it's all about kind of finding out what study, your style you is. You know? do your study mm -hmm. on yourself Research. and your therapist yeah. and all that before you just go spend yeah, thirty five hundred yeah. on yeah. somebody. Awesome. Nah, because the worst thing is wasting your time thirty minutes an hour with somebody. And you just like, man, I don't even want to have this combo. Yeah, I don't like, even like. I don't yeah. even. Yeah. She ain't even yeah. asked me no yeah. questions. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I, she ain't asked no questions. I ain't. Some people did that. Could have called my grandma. Mm -hmm. so, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this girl that used to bully me in elementary school is a therapist, and I'm like, how oh, that wow. work? 
Oh, yeah. wow. She did the self work. Yeah, she did. Yeah. She was like, you know what? I can Maybe I was tripping. I'll be <laughs> looking at that shit. I'll be like, this bitch got some nerve to be out here talking, talking about childhood trauma with other people. And bitch, you was my childhood trauma. <laughs> but yeah. that is down from her having some trauma. That's why she mm. did that. Honestly. Mm. That's yeah, why yeah, think about it. They bully, they really got think about it. I got bullied at home. And, you know what I'm saying? You but no, know. that is true. Because no. a lot of kids that's working in the school system, I realize a lot of them kids that be mean as hell come from awful homes. A lot of them are homeless. Like, I'm from New York. Right. They mad because he. Yeah, yeah, I did yeah. sixth grade students um, for a while, and one of my boys that would come in, and he always had jokes and yeah. was mm-hmm. real like aggressive personality. And then I found out fourteen percent of my students were homeless, mm-hmm. and I'm lot. like, who? Do, I'm like, when was y'all gonna give me these statistics? And I'm like, who's homeless? Like, what is going on here? Like, you need to know these things. There's a there's a poem called because I I forgot my pencil, and it's about a kid who comes to school, goes through all these obstacles just to get to school, and then it, once he walks in class. The teacher's like, but where's your pencil? Why aren't you prepared for school? And he's like, bro, mm. I had to get my sister ready. I had to deal with a drug addict mom. I had to do all this just to get here. And you worried about a pencil. So it's like, oh, right. you forget how much yeah. people go through just to show up. That's, yeah. But listen, that's, a that, good point. that's, that's it's great. But I feel like it's like that a lot of times in relationships, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, like damn, I'm doing all this shit. And you tripping by me liking a motherfucking picture. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh-huh. You got to pick and choose your battles. Boy. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's 100%. I'm willing to fight. <laughs> like, I feel yeah. like if I, I... Don't trip over me liking a picture. Mm-hmm. Like, don't trip over my tweets either. The internet's not a real place. <laughs> hmm. Kodak be getting me in trouble. I don't get you... A, you know what? Shut up. All right. <laughs> we'll uh, Clay, do you consider yourself a high-value man? Because that's really like oh, a, a big Love like this. thing now. You know, shout out to Kevin Samuels, mm-hmm. uh, I guess. Uh, but, yes, do you consider yourself a high-value man? Or, or And if you don't, like, what do you consider, like, a definition of to you what a high-value man is? Yeah, I'm just a work in progress, man. I'm trying to be the best I could be, bro. I'm not uh, considering myself a high-value man because, like, at the end of the day, like, I feel like high-value men, they could play those games where they could take care of somebody. I don't I don't consider myself he in that Blaine, category. I know he is not a- <laughs> listen I'm over here with that hey listen I, that's, I, 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 I love the transparency because shit I be on the same type of time yeah. you gotta say it because yeah. they'll, they'll walk in they expecting it yeah they will like yeah they will. these Kodak be in here like y'all ain't gotta pay no bills who yeah. you because like he said you said you paid your mortgage already right mm-hmm. I already got my apartment I don't need you to come in and help with that just put some fruit Meat in this motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Fruit, like and meat. Fruit, fruit, fruit and meat is a wild combo, right? <laughs> fruit, yeah. some ve- maybe some vegetables too. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. 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 yeah, you know. Okay, I'm a re- so moving forward, right? Everybody in this room, we had a lot of conversations about parents and dating. Moving forward, what do we think the dating scene realistically is in 2024? Like, how will we describe it? <sighs> And everybody's from different cities, so Shitty. this is good. Yes, well, definitely is piss in the pool. I'm telling you, it's <laughs> not good. It's terrible. It's really the internet people. It is. The yeah. Living these joy. fake lives and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, yeah, people I compare themselves to fake do- standards. Mm-hmm. And maybe I met a lot of influencers. Mm-hmm. A lot of them don't have anywhere to stay. The cars are not theirs. Mm-hmm. They're lying. Now, when, you say, Louis, when you say influencers, what level of influence? We're talking about like. I'm talking about big influencers. Okay. Like, yeah. Because, you know, in Atlanta, everybody. Yes, be, everybody is okay. living everybody, that fake life. Everybody influencers. Oh, really? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm yeah. not talking about. Like, everybody in Atlanta is I'm not famous. talking about like uh, YouTubers and stuff. I'm yeah. talking about like big people, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I've been around them. I'm just like, they're not living like they say they're living. A lot of people mm. are homeless. They don't have no home to go to. They don't have no car. They don't have no clothes. They're taking pictures in the store, putting stuff back. Like, they're living fake lives. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like, that's cr- y'all don't want to the internet? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't care. What For free. I, it's not, free. Like, that, people ain't rather be rich ta- on the internet but than rich But that's crazy to yeah. me. Yeah, I don't care is. about what y'all got to say about nothing. What? Why are you paying my bills? And we grew up on social media too, so like it's yeah. it's kind of crazy how everything is, you know? Because we, you right, we do compare a lot, and like I mean, even I had an issue with it. Like you'll get it with a, you'll get it with a woman, and like yeah, this girl is I'm rocking with her, but it's like damn, I got this girl in my DM that's like look a little better. You kind of thinking like you do that comparison, Ooh, that like that little competition. So you kind of playing competition in your head all the time. I think social media definitely has its disadvantages. I, when I did that, and I definitely picked wrong, boy. Yeah, yeah, you picked wrong all the time. Yeah. I picked wrong. I picked, oh man, I picked. The, uh, I picked the what's, thicker one over the the more stable one. What Stephen A said? Stephen A said you need to go to uh, a strong seven. You'll be straight. Mm. She <laughs> was the one I the one I neglected was definitely that. Yeah. Mm. Next yeah. thing you know, she gonna be begging, trying to move in with you yeah. <laughs> and everything. Else. I'm like damn, bitch, you always <laughs> over here. What's up with these I feel cases? like it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> right now because social media one, but I feel like it, a two. Um, 
it's hard to date right now because everybody feels like they know what they want. They mm-hmm. have this mm-hmm. image in their head of the the home that they want to have, you know, the household they want to have, the relationship yeah. they want to have, the car they want to drive, you know what I mean? And they be having good people, like you said, on their front line, but they too busy looking on the back end, you know what I mean? So it's a... It's a win-win, but it's like we're fighting ourselves. That's the mm-hmm. problem. We're fighting ourselves right now. So if we can find how to love ourselves on the inside instead of how to love ourselves on the outside, because that's what our focus is right now, mm-hmm. then a lot you will see a lot of more healthy relationships yeah. because everybody's focused on the clothes they put on and not even the, going to the doctors. You know what I mean? Yeah. But everybody want to look. Don't even got no my chart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is, Same. If, if you don't know, if I ask you what my chart is, and you say yeah, you don't know what it is. Say, baby. <laughs> I, I got a question. I got a question for everybody. I was thinking about this yesterday. Um, can you want somebody to change without wanting to change them? Can you want somebody to change without wanting to change them? Like somebody, like say for instance, uh, you with a nigga and he can't dress. Like, but you love him. I've been there before. Me too. You love the nigga, but you you're not gonna force him. But it's like, okay, I'm gonna accept this shit. I feel like you can definitely. <laughs> want you can deal with somebody what you see as a, a, a shortcoming. And accept it without, and you know they could change on their own time. I want it to change. I'm not okay with this, but you change? you change on your own time, huh? What I think never change. That's fine. I live with it. I think mm-hmm. you could train people to be. I would say yes. Who you want them to be a little bit? I'm not gonna like, say. I think you could train people on, like, all right. So when I was in college, I didn't like the the way the guy dated dress. So uh-huh. on his birthday, I just went all out and just pretty much changed his wardrobe. And then he realized, like, okay, she likes me to wear these type of shirts or these type of sneakers. Mm-hmm. So just being attentive, you could kind of plant But what if seeds. that was him, though? Mm-hmm. What, if, what, if that, that's was, a, that was him. He didn't know how to put that shit on. Realistically, yeah. I, I that's so I small, brought up some yeah, you, you don't lose the love of your... That, but, this is, but, this, but this is what I'm saying. Like, that's that's petty. That's a big thing. That's a, You are a reflect... Especially because of, like... Now, why though? Why? Because you're a reflection of me, really. So you gonna let that the world? You gonna walk around with a girl that's looking crazy all the time? I was looking crazy. Do I love her? Her hair not done. Kodak, what There's if you was with a woman, and right? You can see her wig lifting all day. Uh-huh. And- what if you was with a woman, right? She was solid, like solid, you, like yo, y'all best friends. Yeah, everything was good, but. You know, maybe the sex just wasn't mm. all the way there. Nah, you know? sex, because oh, because nah, because, sex. because no, be, yeah. no, no. Let me let me finish. Because to me, how I how I am, sex. If I really like somebody, yeah. sex is like the sex always gonna be good. Cause mm. sex is mental. It's psychological. It is a mental me. thing. That's so mental. if I like you, then it ain't no such thing as bad. So we gonna make it good. Mm. I'm gonna figure out what we got to do. Mm. No, when I said love, when I uh, said people, nah, don't we nigga uh, now, nigga. No, because though, because there was a question. <laughs> what was who, the question? Who sucks? We we better a girl that's in love with you or a girl that's getting paid. And I said a girl uh. who loves you because when you have sex, when when you love somebody, you want to please them. Like you're more connected, and it. it's like a soul tie type of experience. If it's just you, if it's just a job, a prostitute, then you're just looking at a job. You don't really I care don't about, about that. that. I want to say now, think- they're getting paid. They're probably gonna do their best. They you know ain't. The they, 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 they said that the girl who's getting paid is gonna do their job. I'm, like she's gonna attack it. They said girls who love you are lazy. Ooh. I was gonna say I heard it. Yeah. Well, the girls that love you, they're probably gonna do it a lot more often. Like, ah, oh, I gotta do it again. Gaga, gaga, gaga. 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 Now you getting sucked nah. up by a, a lady of the night. Nah, it depends I'm on how the sex no. is. If I'm in love with you, you about to <laughs> every like, every I'm night you about to. I don't, I don't care. I, <laughs> yeah. Maybe y'all just like doing it. Yeah, I had, if I, I had, had okay. one fun <laughs> run for a year in. Yeah, if you engage and you really like this mm-hmm. person and yeah. you really love this person, it's not, that's yeah. It's not. It's not ugh to you. It's mm-hmm. okay. Let's. Shit, like, it's come like, come on. Yeah. And if you got to pay not, me to do it, I don't want to like do it in the first It's not, but it's passive. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like, you can't, you're not going to have that fire every time. Like, I'm pretty sure even when LeBron play basketball, it's like, all right, here we go again. That's a good one. No. Nah. Point with the analogy. Yeah, you are. Point with the analogy. I think the sex is different in this generation too. I think I don't know. I think the sex was crazy in the nineties and it's crazy right now. Yeah. <laughs> no it's crazier cow. right now. It's crazier right now. Oh yeah, because yeah, you know what? The uh, wildest thing a woman ever <laughs> asked to do to me was she wanted to pee on me. I'm like, that is disgusting. I don't mm. like bodily. No, I don't like bodily. That's where you draw the line. Draw the line. Doo doo and pee pee. Even, and look, even, even if they squirt, you know, squ- you know squirt is, What is about good. the spit and shit? You like the spitting in your I did spit one time, but I was really drunk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Spitting is awkward. That's, yeah. that's, that's a little awkward. But it, but it got to happen in the moment. It was like... Hey, you, you need, nah, you need to be committed. That girl need to put the whole tongue out. Like, you need to let me know. Like, I, mean, <laughs> I ain't got to be there. I ain't got to be there. <laughs> 
<laughs> you be you be spinning. I ain't got nothing to say. <laughs> I'm about to say, if I really like you, yeah, go on to that. <laughs> if we have a sex and a girl say, like, just, like, spin, spin in my mouth, daddy, I'm spinning her mouth. Right. Yeah. 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 You better do it. What? Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it's like, damn, she done, she done lock something. <laughs> <laughs> but what if it's like one of them... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> now you're old. Now you can't get the blood from the back of your that's throat. A, Why would that's I, a different type of spit. Oh, hell no. First of all, that's going to stop the whole experience. You know, they be like, what do you oh, I'm grab the slim from the back of your throat for this? Like, no. I want to get up. I it's just so thought mad. about something. Like, certain shit would just be a mood killer. <laughs> <laughs> a mood killer. Like, what? Like, what's the farting? number one for you? Farting? Nah, nah. It's not a mood killer. Yeah, I'm going to keep going because I'm not going to know where it came from. That was number one for you, though. Yeah. Oh, it could have it been me. I don't know. <laughs> oh my god! If it's a silent killer, I, it yeah. Happen, but I, I can only imagine a nigga farting is crazy, crazy. in the middle. Yeah, of yeah. Oh, what was but you Harry Coochie. You don't like that? That's Hell no. Nah. So I can do Harry Coochie. Say, I can't on, do. That's, that's child. The only thing I can't do is a smell. Like, smell to me, I'm associating smell with hair. Uh, I, I, I mess with girls that don't got it. Hair shouldn't affect. Because it's not, it's not yeah. gonna affect. Oh, that mm-hmm. Who, Dr. Phil? I have no. <laughs> I got a rule on that. You, go ahead. What's your rule? Think, you got an STD if your vagina stinks. Period. I really feel that. Period. Way. I, I'm strong about that. Period. Like, uh, and mention yeah. or, 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 or UTI or something. Yeah, it could be a UTI. Yeah. We gotta become uh, dog snippers. No, girl, walk past me. I smell. She walked past me. I smell fish. I smell what? But if she smells like piss, if she smells like piss or pee or whatever. She has a UTI or something. She's not drinking enough she water. Her pants too. She yeah, ain't pants. right. Clearly, she not drinking enough water. Her jeans is too tight. Her diet is or her up. diet is messed yeah. up. Uh, or she just taking. She's like, nasty. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 or was a four one. Yeah, <laughs> that, that is true. <laughs> nothing. Just let them. I, I I got another question for y'all. Okay. Can a positive relationship come from like a broken home? Like, cause yeah. you was mentioning like, like how you said you you saw your dad doing what he was doing. And now you're in a space to where you're looking for love, and you know you're you're single and trying to find that. But is would that affect you guys in a relationship, or do you have you seen it affect relationships? Somebody just asked me what was my upbringing. That's that's why I'm like engaged. That definitely that definitely that definitely matters. I, I feel, feel like, like it does matter, but it does like I feel like it matters because you are a product of what you were brought up in. Yeah, hundred percent. Right. So if your parents were in two separate households and you seen your mom having multiple men in the house consistently you knew your dad who had seven baby mamas you know what i mean then that as a male you're gonna grow up i feel like and be like okay yeah i got multiple baby mamas and it's cool it's normal because my daddy do it yeah or a woman oh my mom's a stripper she she make money i could grow up i could do this just stripping it's normal you know what i mean so i feel like it, it is it does go back to the household and what you where you was raised on depending on how you the hell you date because the dude that asked me how i was up like how i was brought up after the conversation of two hours, I was like, we were two different people. You know what I mean? You grew up in a suburb. It was like T.I. and Nunu on um, ATL. Mm-hmm. Mm. How Nunu was making this fake persona about herself, but she really was living in this big-ass mansion, and T.I. staying in the hood down here. You yeah. know what I mean? And his parents is dead, and her parents is together in the house, so it, it does affect you because yeah. I got to go home to this every day. And, but when I'm with you, I'm living this fairy tale lifestyle. You know what I mean? Because what you're used to. Yeah. No, I I agree. Because I was talking to a girl not in last year, but probably year before last, late 2022, I think. Yeah. So she had a whole bunch of like issues with her fam, not just like her like parent, mother and father, but like just family just, in general. No, no. And it was like overly emotional. And I feel bad because I'm telling her like, yeah, I'm about to because I holidays I go. Mm-hmm. kick my mom for mm-hmm. like the whole month of December so I felt bad I'm like yeah I'm about to go with my mom and she was Damn. like Damn. Right, what you about to do yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I felt bad but it's like damn so I, I can't help it and if the, my rela- my good relationship with my with my mother is gonna affect you I don't think we can be together mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that as, as adults at some point you have to take responsibility for who you are and how you act I think that, of course, what you see as a child is going to shape you in some way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but now we have a world where the internet's there and you could find out stuff and you could do research. So you could figure, like, okay, I'll, I'll give you an example. One time, Oprah, I seen an episode of Oprah and the little boy said, when I came home from school, I would go get a belt, give it to my dad and watch him beat my mother. I thought all kids oh. did that. He said, I thought that was normal. That's what all kids did when they went, they came home, 
they went and got a belt. He thought that was normal. He thought that's what all kids did because that's yep. all he ever that's saw. So, so, so mm-hmm. to him, that's normal. If all you see growing up is broken stuff in relationships, mm-hmm. at some point, though, you realize, at, as an adult, when you start growing up, you start realizing, okay, that's not normal, and you can start doing the self-healing. But it's still installed in you. It is. I do think that it will affect you. It is, it, it is, it is there, but at some point, you have to start doing the proper research, um, yeah. the proper work on yourself Self. Mm-hmm. to say, okay, that, that was wrong. Yeah. That's what I saw. That's not what I want for myself. You can see things and say, yeah. oh, no, I don't want that. So I think that even if a home is broken, you can say, you know what? I came from a broken yeah. home. I watched my mom be single. I don't yeah. Or you can say, I didn't come from a broken home because you've changed yourself. And they would have never known that mm-hmm. you came from this broken home because you've learned you and work. already corrected yourself. You know what I mean? Because yeah, I even remember when my mom, she she came from a broken home, but she always idolized being a wife and always having kids. So mm-hmm. she used to read books she on it. Sure. And she and mm-hmm. she was in that household going through that toxicity, mm-hmm. but she like made sure that she tried to invest to be a good mother and a good wife. So I do think that it could play an effect, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm more so on your side where it's like you got to put in the work to like change some of those generational curses. Yep. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I remember someone asking one time, like, how do you know how to like love a man, um, like, love me so well and want a family and stuff because I didn't grow up with my mom or my dad. My mm. grandmother raised me, but I was raised with love. My uncles was around, and I seen my aunts and them, like, you know, having a good marriage and stuff. So I'm like, I want to have that too. Yeah. Just because I ain't have my mom or dad. I mean, I don't want to be out here like that either. So yeah. I'm just like, you know, I want that family. I want, you know, a husband, kids. So you know house. what it looks like. Yes. Yeah. And that's all I watch. I love stuff like that. I watch, like, movies all the time. Like, you Rom-coms. know, like, love. You know, this is... <laughs> Yeah, don't watch Love Is Blind. I, yeah, yeah. I, I haven't watched that. I haven't but watched that. that but, I, 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 my yeah. my come up was kind of like the same. Like I ain't grow up with my daddy, so yeah. I didn't. But I also didn't grow up without a father figure because mm-hmm. my uncle, my uncle John, shout out Uncle John. He was um he was with my aunt since I can like you know whatever age we start catching memories. Mm-hmm. So whatever that was, I remember that because I remember like playing with him. Uh, in the front yard of my childhood home. So mm-hmm. I saw what a father was supposed to be like. Mm-hmm. So while I didn't grow up with my father, I had Uncle John, mm-hmm. I had my coaches, had church members. I always yeah. had like mm-hmm. male role models mm-hmm. in the home. Mm-hmm. So now I'm so like, I'm so stiff on shit. Like I would, I don't ever want to be even put in a situation to where I would create a broken home. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Because I know what that shit feels like. Mm-hmm. And I know that's probably, and this is another reason why I think I need to go to therapy because I know my father walking out is probably why I'm such like easily detached from certain people mm-hmm. now. Like mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck about not talking to some certain people ever again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can do, I can cut, it's really like almost psychotic. You got how, siblings? How you can I have this? a brother. Oh, I thought I was that way because I was the only child. Yeah, I have, I have, a, I have a brother, but yeah. me and my, me and my brother, we're we're cool now. But it, he's so different from me. We had to get into a space. You was to gonna it. cut his ass off? Too? No, I, wasn't, I was never oh, gonna cut him off. But we was just we was just different. We we was just different. Like he's like the complete opposite of me. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of easy not to engage with him. Yeah, but good. when I was growing up, I thought like, man, he don't fuck with me. Mm. Right. So my dad not being there was kind of like the catalyst for everything else. And I'm mm-hmm. seeing that. That's why I know I need to go to therapy because I start saying that shit. It's like, eh, one plus one equals two in this When situation. your ass going to therapy? When I got time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing you got time. <laughs> when, you, when I got time, when I find the right person. I remember like, being younger and my aunt came to me and telling me she was getting ready to divorce her husband. And The rich aunt? No. Oh. Um, oh, this aunt broke. She's not broke, but she's not rich. <laughs> it's not the rich aunt. She got money, but she's not rich. Like she, got, she, she's well. Anyway, um, and I asked her why, and she said because he cheated on her, and that was something that I always wanted to know. Do you leave your husband if he cheats on you? So when my aunt came to me and told me that she was leaving him because he cheated, in my head, I remember growing up, I was like, okay, so the answer is yes. You leave if your husband cheats on you. Mm. Um, but then, like I said, once again, being an adult and doing your own life experience and figure out what you want marriage and what values you want, you have to make your own decision. Right. So, mm-hmm. like, yes, what's shown to you is going to be implemented in you. And, of course, it plants the seeds, but how you water it and how, how it grows is all up to you. So I think that, yes... Anything could come from a broken home. Mm-hmm. Anything, mm-hmm. anything. Like, what's the saying? Roses grow from concrete. Yeah, that's yeah, a New York thing, I believe. Anything, like, just because you're broken, broken crayons still color. So, yeah. mm-hmm. 
Yeah. It'll happen. Do the work. My mom loves that saying. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, shit. Another episode kicking with the homies. This is a great one. There was a lot of good conversation here. Me and, me and Clay don't have beef anymore. Oh, yeah. Cool. Y'all, y'all, y'all means. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm okay now. Yeah. <laughs> Love is blind next year. Cast her now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Tune in to uh newest episode of Big Homies House, Big Fast Network. Shout out to, of course, Tamir back in the Woo-hoo. building. Yeah, so I love the ladies from Baddies Casting. Uh, yeah, Clay! What up, what up? Appreciate yeah, it. You gotta, we got to fight. Do you have a, a celebrity crush? Celebrity crush. Um, damn, that's, you put me on a spot with that. I feel like that changes all the time. Right now, you know, it's weird. A weird I got a weird one. Cola Ray. I'm like, really Cola Ray? Oh, yeah. I'm really feeling Cola Ray right Cola now. Cola Ray? You like yeah. the slim thing. You ready, that yeah. you ready yeah. for that, that Cola Ray uh, Megan Thee Stallion challenge, huh? Yeah. I'm a, I think Cola Ray did her challenge. Oh, she did? Yeah, oh, you, oh, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, you knew he did. That's Amos Valley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. represent what a little booty matter. Coy and <laughs> anybody got connected, let me Coy know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, call Coy. Okay, no. call Coy, please. <laughs> <laughs> Another episode kicking with your homies, ATL Worldwide. Let's go big. Yeah. Let's do it. Get, get, get.